Music has gone pop. Someone said to me recently that music should be divided into two categories, music that honors God and music that honors the world. One of those two categories. And so the music that is of the world is being called pop today. That's kind of a general category that includes all kinds of music, not just rock music. Some folks have said it's only the rock music that is wrong. I think there are all different kinds of music that is being used and is, uh, and is called pop, and a lot of Christians are not aware of the problems that are in that music. Pop goes to music. We're going to divide it into three messages. The first one's going to be called Our Musical God. I hope we can show you that our music should be grounded in the person of God. There are principles of the Word of God that ought to be applied to music. I think the reason a lot of folks have gotten into difficulty is they've said, look, music is different from everything else. What I'm saying to you is that music is like everything else. In fact, if I, what I was teaching you was not like other Bible truth, I'd be afraid to give it to you. But I think you will see as we go along that we're trying to base it on the Word of God, and then we're using a lot of communication experts also to show us what they believe music is doing today. Our second message is going to be called, The Style is the Message. I got a letter just several months ago from a man who said, Do you think God has a preference in music? I wrote right back to him. I said, God has a preference in everything. I can't think of anything that God doesn't have a preference in. If you want to send a spaceship up to the moon, you better get your spaceship there when God gets his moon there. You say, well, I'll send it up whenever I want to. You can't do that. You say, well, if I want my music loud, who's to say I can't have it loud? God's to say, that's who. God has made your ears to only take a certain amount of sound. And you go beyond that level, and you're going to hurt your ears. And one of the things you need to know about your ears is that the cells in your ears don't fix themselves. You cut your hand, it may leave a scar, but it'll fix itself. You damage your ear cells, and they are gone for the rest of your life. And many of the hearing ex experts today, audiologists, are telling us that many people in their teens already have ears that have been damaged as much as ordinarily would be in a 65 or a 70-year-old person, and they'll never get that hearing back. Now, who determined that? God determined that. God has a preference in what you listen to. And God has made your ears a certain way for a certain purpose. And you can't go beyond that level without hurting. And so the style, and I'm going to give you a number of quotes, not only the scripture, but a number of quotes that will document the fact that style does make a difference. And that's what our second message is going to be. The third message is going to deal with the matter of contemporary Christian music. CCM. Now I should say right off the bat, <laughs> that there's nothing wrong with being contemporary. I am a contemporary composer. That means I'm writing music right now. A number of years ago, a lady came to Greenville, South Carolina, where we live, and she said, you're Frank Garlock when she met me? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I thought all composers were dead. <laughs> I said, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. That's Mark Twain, in case you're wondering. But see, there's nothing wrong with being contemporary. But when they use that acronym CCM, they're standing for Contemporary Christian Music, and what they really mean by that is Christian rock. Now, it doesn't mean that everything in that category is rock, just like the New Age category. Not everything that is, uh, is called New Age is actually New Age. And not everything that's in CCM is rock, but it means that they do approve of everything that's in that area. And I'm going to show you a number of things that are going on in that area that I think you and I, as Bible-believing Christians, ought to be aware of, and we ought to avoid like the plague. I like what John Macugina has said. He is a scholar. He's a theologian. In one of his books, he says, anyone who attempts to battle CCM today will be facing not just a Goliath, but a Goliath on steroids. <laughs> and if you don't think that's true, you try to talk to folks who are into this CCM, show them what's wrong with it, and you'll find you've got a battle on your hands. And you will be fighting a giant. Or if you have allowed CCM to be in your life, you say, well, I can quit it whenever I want to. Go ahead and try it. And as we're going to show you before long, that music is addictive. Now, I've been speaking on music all over the world, literally. 
And when I first started out, 1965, and I was showing folks that music, that music, right, music is addictive, a lot of folks kind of look down their noses and anybody's be so naive to think that music could be addictive. But I think you're going to see before we get through that you are facing a giant. If it's in your own life or it's in somebody else's life that you know, you're facing a giant. Because what we have today in the church is absolute worldliness. And the passage that is being used by a lot of the CCM people to try to justify what they are doing is 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And that has a verse in it which I'm sure you're familiar with, which says that we should be all things to all men. And the CCM people say that means that we ought to go as far as we can, do everything we can to try to reach the world. But actually what the passage is not offensive or active, the passage is defensive or passive. Because it is not all the things that I will do to try to reach the world, but what can I limit myself from doing in order not to offend the world? In fact, if you study that passage, Paul mentions a number of things that we should not do. Things that he said he would not do. For instance, he said, I will not eat meat offered to idols. He said, I will not be a stumbling block to others. I will not abuse my power in the gospel. I will not offend the Jews. I will not disregard the law. I will not give in to my flesh. I will not use worldly wisdom. It's not all the things that I can do. How far can I go in the world to try to reach the world? But how can I limit myself? That's what the whole passage is about. And the people who are trying to use this passage to justify using worldly rock pop music to try to reach the world are absolutely taking this scripture and putting it backwards from what it actually is meant to say. Now, for 30, over 35 years, I've used this passage as a key passage, a key theme, if you please, for what we Christians should do in this area of music. God says in Ephesians 5.10 that we should be proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Not what do I like, not what do you like, not what does somebody else like, but what does God like? What does God want us to have? Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And that's what we want to do. And so to begin, I'd like to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Maybe you'll want to turn to it. As you know, this whole passage, 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, is dealing with the matter of languages. The King James calls it tongues. It is not showing how to speak in tongues. It's showing the problems that are speaking in tongues. Because the Corinthian church is the weakest church in all of the New Testament. And here, as Paul is trying to show these people about language, he looks for an illustration. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he looks for an illustration. Now, I have to be very frank with you and say that I come at this backwards. I have to say to people today, look, you don't understand music. I'll use language as my illustration. But I'm very much aware when I do that that I'm doing just the opposite of the way the scripture does. The scripture says, you don't understand language, I will use music as an illustration. 